Hey guys, welcome back. So you, I'm sure, remember this first part of the car wash install. We're going to have a bunch of parts and I'm going to talk a little bit so you can understand what's going on here. And I will also be posting a full video of this on YouTube so you can really get an in-depth description. But for now, I have already posted this video and this was under a really hard time crunch because the utility company was coming to inspect to make sure that they can perform the switchover um a few days after this so we were just trying to get this up but the kicker here is that the lumber place that we got all this from gave us really shitty brackets and basically the entire stanchion was moving so we needed to get new brackets and reinstall this and also some of our pipes moved after the concrete settled so you are now going to watch me move this entire stanchion by myself and basically remount it and relocate it because i had no help this day so as you can see i started with this middle piece first because i knew that that wasn't going to move any of the components that we had already mounted so i already moved that bracket forward and now i'm going to put this piece of wood back in the sketchy part though was the fact that now i haven't moved either of the other sides so now i'm pushing and putting a lot of pressure on this wood but it actually worked out i'm gonna have to adjust them later though I'm using my resources here and pushing on this ladder so it will straighten this piece of wood out and I actually took a screw and put it on the top of that ladder so that way the ladder wouldn't move. Removing this second piece is going to be a little bit tricky because now there's only one more piece that's not in place and it's going to put a lot of stress on that side and the wood in total but there's nothing I can do. I have to get it down somehow by myself. So now that it's removed, I'm going to unanchor this bracket. I am using anchor sleeves, so I need to actually just cut the head off of this thing because there's no way I'm getting it out. So I just use a metal cutting blade with my Sawzall and I cut it. And then I relocated the new bracket. And now I'm just gonna drill a new hole for the new anchor sleeve. So that way I can just easily push it through. These are a pain in the ass, but this is what holds it in place. I think they're like six inches long, if not maybe a little bit more than that. But now that it's bolted in, I'm gonna get this piece of wood back up into the bracket. These pieces of wood are so awkward and heavy. It's just fucking ridiculous. And on top of that, I have to maneuver it in a little bit. And since these planks in front are stopping the wood from actually getting fully into the bracket, I have to slam it in and basically do the same thing that I did with the ladder on the middle one. I gotta do with this one, but I'm gonna make sure it's level because if this shit isn't level, it's gonna be a whole different issue. So I had all of these screws that were drilled into each plank fully out. And so now that there are two pieces of wood that are fully up and repositioned, I'm gonna bolt these in so that way I can take apart that last corner here. And this is gonna be the one that sucks because this is the one that my 400 amp disconnect is already on. I really tried not to take it off, but it really just didn't happen. I wasn't gonna put all this in the video, but I'm gonna put it in the video because I need you to understand how heavy this bitch was. I was shaking. And here's the painful back up again, still shaking again, just hoping I don't drop it. The reason I had to take it off was because some of the bolts were not letting those planks move and I needed them to move so I can readjust it. All right, so at this point, I just have to remount this new bracket for this last part. And then hopefully all of this will move forward. At this point, my brother and the other apprentice had finally shown up, but it was a little bit too late. They did bring me some better bolts, so this is me just tightening here. And then I am cutting the top off of all of these because we don't need it any higher. I cut that PVC back because we're actually going to be mounting a cabinet there. And then I just mounted this 200 amp um, outdoor panel. You strut because the customer wanted wood. I don't know why he wanted wood. Don't ask me why. He did though. And he had the option because he's the customer. So I do what he says. And I don't even think it looks that bad. And last but certainly not least we are heating this piece of pipe because it did not go where it was supposed to so i need to make it look nice because this is jacked up part two of the car wash outdoor service and one of the hardest parts you guys like the voiceover so we're going to do it again this job was scheduled for a saturday because that's when the utility company could do it the earliest so that cabinet that i spoke about before um that we were going to put that pipe on 
this cabinet is for the VFD system for the vacuums, basically to control the speed and the amount of energy used. So the VFD system is not NEMA 3 rated. And so we need to find a cabinet that we could put it outdoors. So that way we had enough room to work in it. So we found this cabinet and basically I'm pre-drilling holes so that way we can mount it to the actual concrete slab with these anchor sleeves. And then the other part in the back is gonna get mounted to the actual stanchion that I set up. So basically what I'm doing right now is I am just making sure that this is bolted to the ground um, and we're just waiting for the utility company. So that's why we're doing this. Watch me nonchalantly just put my whole body inside this cabinet. Once the utility company came, I shut down the service and I made sure all the load was shed before I did that, except for the lights, obviously. Now it's time to start pushing our wire into the transformer. For this service, we'll be pushing 600 MCM copper from this disconnect into the transformer. My apprentice Kyle and I, we rolled out all the reels. I don't know why everybody complains about 600 MCM. I actually really like 600 MCM and I feel really accomplished after I do it. It's definitely heavy, don't get me wrong, but I like it. So after we rolled out the wire, then I took my automatic angler fish tape that I got from Milwaukee Tools, shout out to them for getting me that. And I pushed the 100 foot of the conductive steel tape basically through our pipe until the utility guys got it in their transformer. I waited until they tied on and then I pulled it back and what I got back was basically just mule tape that they provided us and I cut that and then we're gonna now put on all of the 600 MCM copper onto this mule tape. We have, it's a three-phase service, so we have black, red, blue, and then we have our neutral. I am taping it with duct tape. Duct tape is the smoothest tape, but the stickiest, so that way it'll keep the wire all together but it'll slide through the pipe really nicely and then we use the clove hitch as i've shown you guys before and we attach the mule tape to it that way and now kyle and i are going to manhandle the shit out of this wire <laughs> this run really wasn't far so it wasn't a tough 600 mcm pull you can see the ground is dug up in front of me and that like is kind of where the transformer is it might be like five feet behind that but now we're gonna wrestle this wire in um and yeah i'm basically gonna show you the whole thing because it is really a pain in the ass to bend this type of wire in this small enclosure so normally i make up the terminations into the lugs especially with this size wire and the fact that there are like no 400 amp NEMA 3 rated outdoor um, disconnects that are fused like in the United States. This was not was a pain in the ass to get. So we didn't want one of the lugs to break off. So I usually do the lug part and then I do have the apprentice towards the end do the neutral because that part can be replaced if necessary. Also, the other thing is, is we're on a huge time crunch because you can't see it, but directly behind me is like four linemen that are just like waiting for me to be done so they can turn back on the service. So I'm kind of rushing. So I'm actually going to let you see how I bend the entire B phase. But usually what I do is I start from C to B to A and I basically dry fit them and get them all ready and figure out the best way that they can come into this cabinet because this cabinet is going to be packed. I had to do a knockout at the bottom left corner, four inch to get into another fuse disconnect. So basically it's just important that you plan out because otherwise once this service is on, it's going to be not fun to try and mess with those wires and God forbid they get hit. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I am like so light so you can tell that I'm like putting my whole body weight at that first bend on that piece of 600 MCM. Also, if you guys don't have these automatic cutters from Milwaukee, like get them ASAP. I cannot tell you what a game changer they are. I'll link them in my bio so you guys have the opportunity to view them. And I also have a digital torque wrench coming as well as a cable stripper from Milwaukee. So once they send it to me, I'll be doing a review on it. I cannot wait. But for now, we're going to be uh, using my nice Allen key set and my handy dandy knife. And so, but this is what it looks like. And the last thing that I'm going to do before I head out of here is actually knock out on the bottom right corner of this disconnect and the bottom left of that 200 amp outdoor panel. So that way we can get some 4 out into there for a 200 amp service. For this, I'll be using an offset 
um, because they're not that far apart where I'm going to need something a little bit longer. So I'm just going to be doing an offset and then you can see I go into um, a very short piece of PVC and then a coupling. I don't have a lot of room here so like I said I was just trying to make it work and also it kind of worked out perfectly with the offset. So this is what we have so far. Part three is going to have even more stuff and we are all set. Can't wait for part three guys. It's in the rain. LOL.